Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged to welcome a very, very accomplished and senior professional from the railways in India, from Lucknow, India, Mr. Sudhanshu Mani. Ms. Mani, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, Mr. Mani is the former general manager of the Integral Coach Factory of the Indian Railways. He's the creator of the much recognized and much talked about Vande Bharat Express. He led Train 18 Vande Bharat Express project, the first ever indigenous semi-high speed train of India from concept to delivery. And he's an author. And all of you know, I'm very, very partial to authors. He's an author of a book titled My Train 18 Story. So, Mr. Mani, before we start talking about uh, the railways, tell me a little bit about what inspired you to pursue a career in the Indian railways. Uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, it's a good opportunity for me to arrogate to myself uh, that inspiration to join railways, but actually that would be untrue. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an interest in railways. I come from a railway family. I was passionate about trains, railway magazines. But uh, after my 12th, I had joined uh, first IIT Kanpur, left it for IIT Rookie. It was then called University of Rookie hmm. uh, for a better branch. And then I appeared in this exam, which is used to be called SCRA. Mm -hmm. uh, the scheme is not there anymore, where you join railways after completing your 12th. Mm -hmm. And they give you a four years training in railway mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. And your job is assured you join as a assistant mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. So it looked very attractive at that stage. There was a fat stipend at the age of 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, job was assured. That was the reason I joined railways. Fascinating. So it's a little uh, detached mm -hmm. from the passion I had. But mm. it was. It would be wrong to say that I pursued my passion to join railways. Fantastic! And from the time you joined the railways till you reached the uh, Integral Coach Factory, what were some of your more memorable uh, assignments in the railways? Yeah, except uh, for a couple of assignments, which everyone comes uh, uh, has to go through for a couple mm. of months here and there. I would really tell you that every single assignment that I had was mm. uh, enjoyable, mm. uh, right? As a junior officer, as a mechanical engineer, mm. traveling on locomotives, foot plating, then uh, working in uh, diesel lake locomotive maintenance sheds where you, where you kind of fashion all 80, 90 locomotives as your children mm. and look after them. Uh, you remember all the numbers of those locomotives and to some extent, as to how those locomotives are expected to behave. Mm. Then in railway workshops and factories, then RDSO, which is the R&D wing of railways, mm. had a long stint there, learning nitty-gritty of design. And then in top management as divisional railway manager in Bangalore and uh, in charge of the rail wheel factory in Bangalore. Mm. And of course, I had... Uh, something unusual for a railway officer. Railways have only, used to have only one assignment outside railways in India. Mm -hmm. uh, that used to be called railway advisor in the embassy of Berlin, mm -hmm. where you are supposed to interact with railway systems, not only in Europe, but all over the world. Mm -hmm. And also look after post-contract uh, management of railway contracts mm -hmm. uh, placed abroad. So I had a three years in, in mm -hmm. Berlin as railway advisor. Mm. And it all ended in, uh, uh, as uh, if I can say, the donkeys and the horses move in the same file in railways. And mm. this donkey had the opportunity to get kicked up as a general manager in August of 2016. And that was my last assignment. Amazing. You're being very, very modest, sir. But, uh, you know, let me then start by asking you a more generic or a broad question. Over the last four decades, how have you seen the Indian railways change and evolve? Right. Okay, so there are two aspects to it. The good aspect is what I'll talk to you earlier. Mm -hmm. I will give you some examples uh, what changes have happened. Uh, one would say 
less prosaic, the mm. freight business, you see, railways uh, decided to move only bulk traffic mm. and uh, not pick up wagons here and there, form a train and then run. So that uh, it happened in early 80s. Mm. And that boosted the railway revenues quite a lot. Mm. Then you see what railways did in the late 1980s, uh, thanks to the then railway minister, Madhav Rao Sindhya, is absolutely magical. Mm -hmm. What you call the passenger reservation system. Mm. It, it was there in place in late 80s and you could reserve your ticket mm. from anywhere for any journey. Earlier, right. used to you see, if you were going to Goa, you would get a reservation here, but your return reservation was wired to them. Mm. And you landed there, you never knew if you have a reservation. Uh -huh, yes. so it was revolutionary. And when it happened, it was more advanced than the, than the reservation system of Indian Airlines, for example, mm. Mm. and many rail systems. Then you would, I would also rate introduction of Rajdhani and Shatabdi trains mm. as game changers. Correct. Uh, so these are some of the examples which I say are the positive aspects. Mm. The negative aspect is, oh, which is the seed of my story, was mm. the, uh, the recall, the image of an Indian Railways train. Mm. If you really look at it, if you close your eyes and recall it has not changed mm. since decades, for decades. Mm. Uh, it was always an angst and you perhaps a dream that why such a large railway network with such mm. a huge pool of engineers cannot make a swankier, you know, aesthetically superior, technologically right. superior, speedier mm. train on Indian railways. Mm. And uh, that was the, uh, as you can say, the seed of the story of this train. That we Amazing. Made. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and we've all grown up. I mean, my father was a very senior army brigadier. But we all grew up traveling only in the railways. So I can understand what you're saying. You know, you've been involved in leading what I would say today is probably one of the most modern trains, which is the Vande Bharat Express. How is the Indian Railways modernizing its infrastructure and technology to keep pace with changing times? Yeah. <laughs> so you seem to have uh, studied this subject. Uh, that's an unusual question. Because people begin by asking about the train. Mm. So we build, you know, uh, you would know, when you design a product afresh, you design it for certain application. In you. We were making Indian railways ready for 160 kilometers per hour capable, mm. modern, aesthetically superior train. Mm. And we wanted India to be ready in the hope that infrastructure to support such a train would also be in place. Correct. We have only one track today between Delhi and Bhopal, which can support 160 kilometers per hour. Okay. Speed. Hmm. Konkan railways can never be tracked. Hmm. <laughs> so, we built the train in a record time. And uh, it was tested at above 180 kilometers per hour and cleared for 160 kilometers per hour operation. Hmm. But uh, today, 15 trains have been introduced, all Amazingly, all mm. launched by the Prime Minister himself. Mm. But these trains, except the one between Delhi and Bhopal, recently mm. started, all of them run at 130, at times 110. Mm. So the train's potential is not fully being exploited. The mm. travel time cut down that it has the promise of is not happening. Mm. Nevertheless, uh, the, uh, the what I'm trying to say is that while the train has visibility and people like it, people throng to see it, so government is pleased about it. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure development may not uh, get that, those eyeballs, but mm -hmm. it's absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bombay, Delhi, Delhi, Havra is already sanctioned. Work to upgrade it to 160 is happening, but slowly mm -hmm. it should be expedited. And I would go as far as to say that all major tracks connecting the metro cities, the diagonals and the quadrilateral mm -hmm. should be upgraded to 160 kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. While the face of Indian railways would change because more and more of such trains, but these trains would not be running at the potential. Mm -hmm. Well said. Well said. But my question to you, sir, is that when 
different parts of the developed world and maybe even China is talking of much higher speeds. Why are we still only talking of 160 kilometers as our target? Yeah. All right. So uh, you said perhaps China. No, absolutely China. China has overtaken the world. So mm. China yeah. has uh, reached somewhere which, I mean, it's too far away now. Mm. So, but in all of them, Germany, mm. China, Japan, France, yeah. First they, yeah, France, first they upgraded mm. their existing tracks to reach a certain level, mm. 200, 220. And then built dedicated lines mm. to okay. uh, run uh, speedier trains above mm. 250. Uh, Japan was the first, you would have right. heard of Shinkansen. So it started in early uh, eight, 1960s. Mm. So this was being debated in India, as is our world. We we debate and debate and procrastinate. And, but uh, the present government, thanks to Prime Minister Modi, they started sincerely on this project of a dedicated track between Mumbai and Ahmedabad. It got stuck in some politics, you know, in Maharashtra, but it's back on track. Uh, it is expected it will be in place uh, before the decade ends. And there, the trains would run at 350 kilometers per hour. Mm, wow. And it will cut down. It will eliminate air traffic between Ahmedabad and mm. uh, Mumbai. Amazing. But what is needed is more such sectors. Because mm. we are a large country. And we cannot be an exception in the world that we don't have high-speed train network. The USA doesn't have, but they have lobbies of roads Correct. and air Correct. and so on. Correct. But every country worth its name has a high-speed rail network. And we must do it quickly. Well said. Well said. So I... Thank you for letting me, you know, telling me because I didn't realize you needed dedicated lines for high-speed trains. But that's yes, a new learning for me, sir. Thank you. So now coming now to the Integral Coach Factory. The Integral Coach Factory is known for producing high-quality railway coaches. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the manufacturing process and any innovations that you introduced during your tenure? Okay. So I would still. Uh, put those uh, high quality under quotes because we are not where we should be. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the exterior finish of a train should be like an automobile. We mm -hmm. are not there. But nevertheless, more of the same large numbers, uh, a legacy of last uh, nearly 70 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we did uh, many, many innovations, mm -hmm. big, small, mostly small. Mm -hmm. So I'll not get into the detail, but I would like to say something here. Mm -hmm. which is very relevant for, I would think about your listeners. You see, in India, we try to copy the platform of innovation. We talk mm -hmm. of Kaiza, quality circle, this and that. But this mm -hmm. is all thrust from the top. Correct. And I know instances where the so-called ideation is hardly ideation. It is an idea of the boss which is thrust mm -hmm. down and emerges as an ideation. Mm -hmm. It defeats the purpose. It never can take you anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry to say, in November 2016, there was a huge railway shiver organized by the ministry. Mm -hmm. And I can stick my neck out and say it was a big sham. It mm -hmm. was all uh, one consultant had made out ideas which were given to people to read out. Uh, but what I would like to say here and what I have experienced firsthand, I learned it from somebody. Mm -hmm. Every man has ideas. Mm -hmm. Everyone has ideas. Absolutely. And you have a huge human resource, a huge. Mm. We don't give them a platform to listen. We only, you know, make pretend, make believe. Give them a platform. Mm. Listen to them. You may not adopt it. Let it be discussed with people. And if it's good, make him the one window, single window mm. with authority to implement it. I'm telling you, I've been doing this. And in ICF, I was the most successful, I guess. Mm. Uh, platform for staff, platform for officers. With a caveat that every officer must have an idea every month. Now mm. that's command. Mm. But then you are an executive. You, you Your job is not only what your job is, which is 10% of your job. You have to think out of the box. It will add a value to what you do. Mm. And I'm telling you, not one of those ideas was mine. 3,000 to 4,000 ideas, small, mm. emerged. And at a strike rate of 60, 70%, you see 3,000 things done mm. without any extra effort. 
So that's the power of ideation and innovation. Correct. Um, Correct. That's what I would like to say instead of getting nice. into specific examples. No, no, well said, well said. I think that's a, it's a very, very powerful comment that you made for our viewers and listeners on the power of ideation. My next question to you, sir, is that uh, how do you see the future of railway transportation in India and what role do you think ICF will play? Okay. So ICF would continue to be the primary manufacturer of railway coaches. It was intended to be a manufacturer of railway coaches of current technology. Mm -hmm. And it was in 1950s, believe me, when the Swiss set this factory up for mm -hmm. us. But today it is not. Mm -hmm. And it will take some time to reach there. Mm -hmm. But I will uh, kind of uh, transmute your question into larger uh, image of railways that mm -hmm. I would like to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see, we are living in Amritkal. And we are supposed to be mm -hmm. a developed country by 2047. Mm -hmm. If not earlier. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two, three things. So, so first is, yes, we'll have a lot of Vande Bharat running at 200, upgraded track, 200 kilometers, crisscrossing uh, the country. We'll have or should have multiple high-speed rail tracks, mm -hmm. eliminating the air traffic in those areas. When I say eliminate, please remember that railways is the cleanest, greenest mode of transport mm -hmm. compared to road and uh, air mm -hmm. by multiple times. So it, it is going to help environment as such. Mm -hmm. And if it is reaching you in the same time, then why not? Correct. We'll have, uh, we'll have, uh, just give me two minutes. We'll okay. have a freight business, which is at, after independence was in 80s, mm -hmm. percentage wise, intermodal, today it is 27%. Mm -hmm. For a clean and green mode of transport to contribute only 27% mm -hmm. is not good. Mm -hmm. And why it is so? It's because we don't, assure delivery it's fast but we don't assure it because our last mile and the first mile pickup and the last mile delivery is very poor mm. so those are the things which are supposedly being addressed through yeah. Gati Shakti and so on and I hope that happens I hope so too. that's one part mm -hmm. and there's another thing which where we are going wrong one is we have this fad to make stations call it airport like stations mm. that's to my mind totally misplaced. Mm -hmm. An airport is an airport, a railway station is a railway station. Mm -hmm. A railway station, you are not supposed to spend one and a half hours on before boarding and mm -hmm. after alighting. Mm -hmm. You need to spend in an efficient railway system five minutes at the Correct. station. Correct. And perhaps three minutes after getting out. Mm -hmm. So it, it need not be a mall, it need not be a hotel, it need not mm -hmm. be. It, it is just functionally effective exit and entry supported by an information system where mm -hmm. I don't have to ask here and there, yet mm -hmm. train kiss platform pe aayegi and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And in case there is a waiting time, mm -hmm. a good waiting area and clean and hygiene. That's Correct. it. Correct. So we should pursue that goal and make all our stations like that. Whereas we are pursuing this uh, five-star station mm -hmm. business, which I don't see the value in. Mm -hmm. And one last point. A uh, developed country cannot have seen that we have a lot of stations. Mm. You see, we have porters whom the Britishers taught us to call coolies. We still call, bargain mm. with them. Okay, they may be overcharging, whatever. Carrying head load on their head, three tier, another one back, mm. with his neck bending. You have these uh, hand trolleys packed with luggage and mm. some hamal pushing it, shouting, oh, 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 mm. for people to get away. Yeah. You have our uh, Safai Karmachari, mm. the hygiene workers working in appalling conditions. Mm. These things have to be changed and I have been able to do it mm. in my career. Mm. It's not impossible. You have to give dignity to these people. Mm. They may continue to do the same job, but in a mm. dignified manner. And by assigning them dignity, you are not, nothing but assigning dignity to yourself. Because these are not the scenes you would see in a developed country. Well said. So, yeah. So, we have to eliminate, start eliminating it right now. We don't have to wait for 2047 for it mm. to happen automatically. Mm. Correct. Correct. Well said. Thank you. That was a wonderful response. So, I have time for two more questions for you, uh, sir. One, My next question is that, uh, one more question, the railways, and I want to come to your book. Uh, 
the railways is the biggest employer in India. Yeah. As someone so senior, what would you say? And you said you started when you were 17 years old. Yeah. What are some of the leadership lessons you have learned yeah. uh, as a senior leader from the railways? Yeah. So, so I'll relate, you know, everything that I've learned is Absolutely. from my seniors in railways, mm. from my reading, but mostly from my emulating uh, role models. Mm. Uh, not complete role models, role mm. models in certain aspects mm. and so on. Uh, so if you permit, I will relate a couple please. of incidents yes, which please. would, uh, you know, uh, which still need changing. For example, we, in 1985 or so, in a diesel shed, we built, a, we got a computer for the first time. Mm -hmm. And we built a room, uh, put air conditioner in it, because those days air conditioner yeah, could be put if you had a computer. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And uh, uh, the GM, the general manager of Eastern Railway, big man, he was mm -hmm. coming to Burgwan, we invited him to inaugurate it. Mm -hmm. So he came over, patient gentleman, and uh, just in, on the room, there was a plaque, and he had to, you know, pull a rope or something to unveil it. Mm. As he was doing it, he saw his name on the plaque. Mm. And he got furious. Mm. He said, you have built something with railway money. And you think I'll immortalize myself by, by, by you putting my name there? Mm. I mean, we were flabbergasted. That mm. was a norm. Correct. And he got furious. He said, I'm not going to do it. And mm. we, we could somehow yeah. convince him to do it. But the lesson I learned from what he said. Mm -hmm. He said, as a leader of these uh, one lakh people or whatever the mm -hmm. number of, mm -hmm. if I cannot live in the hearts of the people I administer, mm -hmm. you think I'm going to live in a stone? Oh, wonderful. So I followed it mm -hmm. all my life, mm -hmm. all my life. And I used to get things inaugurated by the senior most staff member of that area mm -hmm. who has given his blood, sweat, tears to that mm -hmm. area. He would come there with tears in his eyes before mm. retiring, mm. take that memory with him, come with his son, his daughter, his uh, his or her daughter, mm. spouse, mm. and uh, he's the one who is going to value it. This well was one. Said. Well said. Mm. There is another one, uh, if you have time. I have time, it, sure. It is a little funny as well, but it, it, it has a lesson there. And that's about the colonial, the feudal mentality of mm. government, mm. railways, everywhere. It is not yeah. Unfortunately, not really changed. Mm. I should have been uh, dumped right after independence, mm. but it has not. So mm. so I was posted, my first posting as assistant engineer, railways give you a briefcase, brand mm. new briefcase. Mm. Mm. I was very proud of it. Mm -hmm. So I put some useless papers in it and cross, I was in Howrah, so cross the river over to go to headquarters. That's mm. fairly place in Kolkata. Mm. And... Uh, I went, entered into an officer's room, put the briefcase on the table, and he was, he looked at it. He said, you got this briefcase? I mm. said, yes, sir. Uh, he said, okay, so you're going to carry it? Mm. I said, well, stupid question was that, but yes, sir. Mm. Mm. He said, you see, you, when you came, uh, you carried it or your attender carried mm. it? Mm. I said, sir, my attender carried it because he crosses the river, he gets some traveling allowance, so he's always cut with me. He says, now that fellow has gone for tea, mm -hmm. and now another senior officer will call you for a meeting, mm -hmm. and then you have to go, you mm -hmm. will look for that fellow, he's not there, so yeah. you will carry it yourself. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you, like all railway officer, you will be a caricature of yourself, you'll be so funny to look at, because you think you are doing something infra mm -hmm. but you have to do in any case. <laughs> okay. That, then he showed his cloth bag, mm. that, that leftist cloth bag. Yeah, he said, sure. I carry this. Same day, I abandoned that briefcase, gave mm. it to my PN. Every mm. PN, every three years, you get one. You did. And I bought a bag for myself. Okay. I okay. never let anyone touch Very my bag. I fantastic. always carried it on, on my shoulder. Fantastic. Now, this is symbolic. It only shows yeah, how yeah. feudal the culture is. Mm. And it is still not changed. You mm. see, you go to a government officer, you'll see a string of attenders waiting yeah. there for pick up the picking up the bag, the tiffin box. And, mm. Mm. and that has I to change. You see. We cannot go on like this. No, no, I'm completely with you. So, I have time for one more question, sir. I'm good. This is about your book, My Train 18 Story. I'm yes. going to ask all our viewers and listeners to go and check out Mr. Sudhanshu Mani's uh, book, 
my train 18 story on uh, Amazon. Tell me a little bit about your book. Yeah. So you see, this was a very intense uh, uh, two and a half years, but mainly very in- after we got the sanction in April mm. of 2016, very intense 18, 19 months mm. uh, and, and roadblocks and hitches, glitches, but synergy and solution mm. somehow uh, because we had to turn out the train before I retired. Otherwise, mm. there was a risk of the project getting abandoned. Mm. Not, not that I attached my name to it or sure. anything. Sure. So, we lived through that and then uh, train was successful. It was mm. inaugurated. I retired and I was, you know, casually blogging about it. Although I had written five books earlier, but mm-hmm. it was all related with my passion, art and railways and mm. about greenery, coffee table books. Mm. So I started blogging and so on. And then, unfortunately, as things happen in our country, there was a certain set of jealous, uh, you mm. know, venal, corrupt officers who wanted to give a bad name to the train mm. to whatever end they wanted. It went mm. on for some time, mm. negatively. Mm. So I, I, I lost the uh, motivation to write, but then I regained the motivation mm. because I realized that it was not me. I was getting all the attention, mm. overdue. Mm. not more than I deserve in mm. media everywhere. Mm. But there was a core team of very dedicated, committed railway men mm. who gave their heart off to make this train. Mm. And they were unknown and unsung. Mm. Now, who would be the best to call their name out? Mm. So I thought I must write this book. Fantastic. To relive the story and call out as many names as possible and their mm. contribution. Mm. In fact, I have a copy here. Uh, so this is the book. Yeah. It's a, I have, uh, no and that's comment. certainly not you in front of the train, is it? It is actually. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretentious, but uh, yeah. No, no. Looking, I mean, back, uh, looking I thought, back, I should have put you know a group photo. Which no, I no, no. I mean, I was trying to relate it with the person next to the book. But so it's. Uh, I have no commercial interest in its hmm. sale, uh, uh, but uh, it's available on Amazon and uh, wonderful. Basically. So these were the two purposes. Thank That's you. why I wrote no, no, this it. has been fantastic. And on that note, uh, Mr. Mani, thank you so much for speaking to me. I mean, I've really enjoyed my journey with the Indian Railways as you reminisced about your own journey. I know people of my vintage, I'm 66, but I've really oh. traveled extensively in trains as we were growing up. And uh, I think it's 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 an institution that has continuously connected the world, and I think you've played such a significant role in bringing the next generation of trains, which is Vande Bharat, and I'm sure your Vande Bharat will go from strength to strength. Thank you for speaking to me, sir, and good luck to you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Garg. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.